Thank you very much. Okay, it's a little after five. We'll call the meeting to order. Um, we have a full house. Oh. I would necess I would nets I would generally call for an adoption of the minutes of June 6, 22. But our fiscal officer, who's in charge of the minutes, of course, has asked that we put that off for a, uh, another meeting because she wanted to fine tune the minutes just a little bit more. So we will do that at her request. However, I will entertain a motion to approve payment of bills the amount of $86,580.32, broken down <coughs> general fund. $2,382.43, fire fund $30,967.74, cemetery fund $828.93, EMS billing $2,630.03, road bridge $49,771.19. $49,000, that's probably that new truck. Is there a- uh, I, I make that motion. We have a motion, I will second it. Any further discussion? Regarding payment of these counts? Hearing none, I have no question. <laughs> Hearing none, may we vote please? All those in favor, say goodbye. No, we'll have to do it the other way. Um, uh, Mr. Hollister? Yes. I have to change gears how I do this. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Okay. That's, that has passed. Correspondence this period we received uh, U.S. Department of Treasury Release of Equity and Outcomes Resource Guide, Ohio Connects from Ohio and Budget Office of Budget and Management. Yellow Springs Senior Housing Listening Session, Friday, 624. Colin, did you go to that? I did not. Okay. Um, we'll mention that later on. An email from Lee Sloan about Kingswood, Kingswood Solar. Wild Grapes, uh, probably mentioned that later on. Save the date, July 22nd, Canoe Trip. Uh, OPRS in person seminar for ready to retire dates. Anybody ready to retire yet? I am. No. Uh, Calabarium delivery date uh, already been delivered. Uh, Tarma update newsletter. Uh, ODD fellows, that is a fireworks fund request. We'll, we'll take that up also. A new business, uh, July 12th, uh, uh, Green County Township Association meeting announcement, uh, which we are hosting uh, on the Seattle Township and Green Township. A notification that uh, mileage reimbursement uh, federal. Uh, reimbursement number went from 58.5 to 62.5. Uh, virtual certified public records training registration. Planning official training session seven reminder, which has already happened. Uh, fund status, revenue status, preparation status for today. Any further correspondence in or out? Not that I'm aware of. None. We'll move to number five on the agenda, which is public comment on agenda items. Hello, public. Well, part of it would be any items they want to add. Well, let's, we're, let's throw it all in here. They're, Tom, well, hold on. Okay. okay. We're going to put you in a little special, little special pot. All right. But any other public? I'm Hey. <laughs> Has anything to say about what's on the agenda or what they would like to speak about tonight? It's we now forever hold your peace because we will not entertain further comment through the rest of the meeting. Yes, I oh. speak as a member of the public. Right. I mean, we're speaking of the fire levy tonight, right? Yes, we are. Um, my question was, the question I want to pose is how the calculation for the amount was reached, you know, based on the total sort of based on equipment needs or like what the general formula is. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, Ted, could you wait until we get into the fire department report, which will include the discussion on the levy? Because if, if I answer it to you right now, then there's a lot of parts that aren't going to. No, I understand. I just didn't know if I could bring it later to this one. Yeah. Okay. Sure. It will be. It will. It will be addressed. I think what Chris meant was. No other topics would be brought up mm -hmm. unless you brought it up now. But that doesn't exclude you from commenting on the rules before you. Are you having that's an amendment? Okay. Is that our list? No. Anyone else? Well, that was that was easy as can be. 
And so, here we go. We will move to the fire department report. Chief Altman, thank you. Since the last meeting of the board, we've had 42 EMS calls and 23 fire calls. <coughs> um, unfortunately, in the six minutes I had, I didn't have enough time to break down how many were in bath tents. At least 41. Um, a couple incidents of note. We had a gas line struck at Millworks Business Center on Sunday last week. We did not put police together at this point. Luckily, there were no injuries. Um, the contractor stated he had had location services out and apparently was digging where he should have been, but still had a one inch service line. So. Do they have automatic shut off valves? They do not. No. Not in that area. The bigger ones, the size, bigger yeah. pipelines do. Mm -hmm. um, Center Point got there within, I don't know, what, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, type? Good. Yeah, and, what? Yeah, the yeah. got there. Pretty and pretty. they were able to find a valve and shut it down. So it leaked for 20 minutes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, luckily it was a breezy day, and mm -hmm. natural gas was laid in there, so it mm -hmm. dissipates quickly. But uh, the whole complex was evacuated, uh, you know, including the brewery, which really caused a lot of problems for people coming to town. They're like, what? I can't get my beer? Um, what time of day? Day drinking. Hello. Um, it was, what, 2 o'clock? Yeah. 1.30 o'clock? Yeah. 32 o'clock. So, so the brewery, I think, had just opened. Um, uh, but Lisa Walters took her staff to the uh, corn cone for ice cream while they were waiting, so it all worked out for them. Uh, and for us, though it was hot um, for the crew that was doing most of the work. I got to sit in my air-conditioned truck most of the time and, and watch them, so good work to the crew. Uh, we've had a couple crashes, including one last night with a rollover at a really bizarre place, but um, that all worked out. And then... Uh, Where was the bizarre place? Just uh, Cornerstone and North Enid Road, Ooh, cool. which is not... Where you have crashes, mm -hmm. but stranger things have happened. Um, we did have a rollover once in front of the Mills Park Hotel, in the middle of the true. Time, so that was That's that was weird too. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there was during the uh, big storms of two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, there was a small fire at um, electrical incident at Friends Care Center, which triggered them to have to you know, go to the emergency plan and move residents. And, uh, but luckily, damage was limited to an air conditioner. Uh, during the storms, uh, unfortunately, our brush truck was sideswiped by a driver, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, who apparently then left the scene. But our brush truck crew did the traffic stop, <laughs> very professionally, and uh, held him at gunpoint. That's a joke. They did not. Uh, <laughs> until OSP arrived. Uh, luckily, it's been old damage. We're just waiting to hear back from Otarma. Uh, okay. uh, basically, just a cut of some crashes, and the mirror broke the glass. And, the vendor did not have insurance, or uh, I'm waiting to hear back from mm -hmm. all those guys. Things, so. to please take a report. I assume those people take a report. The better, but you never know with the troopers. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they just strange things. So. Uh, and we were in the pride parade over the weekend. I mean, I wasn't, but the engine was. And uh, yeah, that's about it. We're still here. Still warm in here, but uh, <laughs> you're still here. Yes. Okay, um, and then do you want to get off with levy discussion? Or do you want to no, not, not quite. Okay, uh, <laughs> I want to lead off with: uh, Are you prepared for fireworks this weekend? Is it any different this year? Do you have any potential concerns about the new state law, which is letting anybody and everybody just blow everything up? Um, are you additional staffing for that possibility? Um, I mean, I've got to bring in a couple extra people just because we have to be there and have to make sure that nobody blows up. Um, the new law in Ohio is problematic to a degree, but was the best possible solution because the current law wasn't doing any good. Anyone who's been to our fireworks knows that there's a really good show on the south side of town, private show, mm -hmm. that is, was technically illegal, but people were doing it anyway. So um, you know, the fire chiefs supported this law because at least now we can do public education about how to use fireworks safely if such a thing is possible. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how this year goes. Um, I had some conversations with the village manager he was asking about what 
he thought what I thought the village should do if they should pass one of those prohibitions like some cities have done. Um, I advised against that just because the police are busy enough and don't need to be running all over town trying to find fireworks offenders, which I think is what's going to happen. In, I mean, I'm sure Dayton Police has a few other things to do besides arrest the 17 year old in the fire. So we'll see. And it's going to be interesting here just to see how it goes. But I'm sure the fireworks sales guys are pretty happy about Because, I mean, I know everybody was complying with the law and taking them out of, out of the state within 48 hours of purchase. Oh, of course they were. Certainly. <laughs> no question. Were you aware that there's a two vendor stores? Yes. Yeah. Mark, you might be interested. Mark, I'm Mark, maybe. You're Mark. Um, the host way, maybe. But okay. I'm aware of that. Perfect. Thank you. Anything else? Nope. Okay, let's move into some discussion um, regarding the uh, potential of a levy uh, this fall. And before we get too far into it, and I'm going to turn this over to, to the chief, I want to make it perfectly clear to everybody and anybody that this levy is for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's to, um, to fund personnel in the station. No other reason. It's not for operations, it's not for equipment, it, it's not for anything except for salaries, insurance, Medicare, Medicaid, not Medicaid, um, medical, medical insurance, workers insurance. compensation, workman's compensation, all the benefits Where that there are, um, but that is it. And folks, when you hear some numbers, you're going to be surprised. <laughs> I was very surprised. Yes, sir. Just a point of order before you do this. The uh, third or the second line under the resolution, um, because of the, the font was larger, it's, it doesn't include the part about the Ohio Revised Code. Oh, you're right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> and you were given Maryland props. <laughs> Yeah, seven four two point three of two. B. Well, we'll just put. Mm -hmm. Or C. Oh. Uh, C. I just want to make sure the eyes are dotted and the T's across for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Which one? So thank you. Okay. Um, Colin, you want to start off? Sure thing. Um, so first off, you know, a little history in that. The current operating levy, the 3.6 mil levy that we're operating on, was first approved in 96 or 7, uh, back in the day when we had well, two full-time employees and up to 60 volunteers. Uh, and in those days, some of you, well, Ted may remember, <laughs> we actually at times had a waiting list for volunteers. Um, and we were well staffed and could get the ambulance out, not as quickly as we could now, but um, Unfortunately, following most national trends, as we've become busier, when I took over as chief in the early, in the mid-90s, we had 502 calls. Last year, we had 1,300. Um, so we were able to handle those 502 calls without a problem with volunteers, but it's training, and it's the same sob story any fire department's going to tell you in the state of Ohio. As training uh, has increased, requirement increased for both EMT and firefighter, as well as continuing education. Um, and the state has made a push to make both certifications more professional, um, coupled with people just, the society changing. Um, our number of volunteers has dropped stupendously. We have had people come in who want to volunteer and they think that all they need to take is a first aid class, and that is unfortunately not the case. Uh, EMT courses are about 186 hours now, the basic fire is 170 something. And then it takes a lot of time to uh, to handle to do the calls. So we've seen uh, a, a massive drop in the number of volunteers, as have most departments in the state that do more than 200 calls a year. Uh, I travel around the state with the Ohio Fire Chiefs visiting fire departments, big and small. Uh, what I found is places that do about 100 to 200 calls a year and do only fire tend to do pretty well with volunteers still because. 
fun. <laughs> and it still meets what a volunteer fire department used to be. You know, our department was a social club where people came and they drank beer and, and uh, went on a couple calls every now and then. And uh, that's not the case anymore. Now we're 1,300 calls, primarily emergency medical services. You can't really drink any beer and go on a call anymore. That's kind of frowned upon. Um, so it's tough. It's tough to staff. And we have slowly added staff and done our best to maintain a volunteer base. Uh, we've spent, i got to get the exact numbers, but my estimate is about $5,000 over the last five years in two volunteer mass mailing campaigns, um, which have netted us, I don't think anything, honestly. <laughs> I think three applications which didn't turn out yeah. in the long run. Yeah, because you know they get into a class and they realize this is a lot of work. And, and I, don't want to, I don't have the time for it, unfortunately. So, um, so we've tried. We've done what we can, uh, but you got to keep the lights on. You got to keep the ambulances and the fire engines going. So we've just slowly worked to add staff. Our biggest change was right before we moved in here when we put our three supervisors on the 2448 rotation to assure that there was always a, a supervisor and a paramedic here, uh, which we continue with today. Um, and we've moved to a model now where we try to staff a minimum of three people per 24. Well, that's not optimal, it's better than none, that's better than two. Um, that gives us the ability to maybe get a fire engine and ambulance out, uh, especially when they're supplemented by the few volunteers we have who are wonderful and do a great job, uh, but they are few and far between. Um, so the levy is still, you know, the levy that we're operating on is still the levy that was designed for two full-time people and 60 volunteers. And unfortunately, because Levies don't always keep pace with inflation and with costs and property values. We're still getting $560,000 a year religiously. I don't know if religiously is the right term, but from the county. Um, we implemented EMS billing in 2002, I think, or 2008, actually, um, which has, we were the last department in the county to do so. Um, and that generates, luckily, we're a pretty well insured community, so it generates. 120 to 130 thousand bucks a year, give or take, depending on how the year goes. We did have a dip uh, with COVID, obviously, because we're going to the hospital. Um, that money is used to supplement our salary. So at this point, but not all of it. it, it no. Only about 60 percent of it. Yeah, it's a small supplement, it's, mm -hmm. and it's gotten smaller as we ate up a lot of it last year. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we're looking at because of rollovers in the fire fund that we are able to roll money over, which is rapidly dwindling. Uh, you know, this year we're at the tip of the crisis mode where we're, we have 929,000 and some change budgeted for the year. And our personnel costs are going to be, hopefully, 896,000 and some change. Which doesn't leave a whole lot of money since well, it leaves $32,000 and some change. And our fuel bill is estimated to be about $22,000 this year. So, um, that's to include operating supplies, fuel, insurance, the electricity, all that kind of stuff. So we've been lucky that for the last several years, the general fund, which funds everything else in the township, roads, zoning, roads and zoning, and general trustee operations, not the cemeteries. Cemeteries are self-supporting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not the cemeteries. So they've had some extra money and have been able to supplement us, but that uh, we're, we're sucking them dry, I guess. So. <laughs> That supplement will be going away because there just won't be any more, and the township has to keep doing the roads and general operations of the township because that's a lot. And we need roads, obviously. Let me just add one yeah. thing while he's, while he's going there. <clears throat> Over the past years, and hindsight being 2020, you know, there was a million ways you could have done, could have done this. We could have asked for a, a levy five years ago or 10 years ago, an additional personnel levy. A small one, and it could it could have incrementally uh, increased as as time went on. But we decided to close our eyes now and tighten our belt and see how see how well we could do with what we had, and that's what we did. And the problem with doing with what we had was we did away with everything other than personnel costs. We have zero money set aside for any capital expense, for, for an ambulance, for a fire engine, for SCBA equipment, for 
uh, infrared cameras for and we have zero money for that type of that type of thing. <clears throat> That's what the operating levy is for. Granted, in the past, it, it also funded salaries, but it doesn't it, it doesn't fund everything both both things uh, at the same time anymore. So we have cut virtually everything other than salaries out of the fire fund, and now we're starting to go into the general fund to just supply, for example, the general fund is going to spend uh, close to $300,000 for a new ambulance as soon as we can order one. Of course, they're back ordered for two years, and for the last year, we've, you know, we've, we've, we've got the specification for them, we're ready to go. However, Ford's not taking orders until October for chassis, and, and I forget the name of them. Who's building the, uh, well, hopefully, the Braun ambulance. Okay, Braun. Uh, they're two years behind because they can't they can't fill orders because they don't have chassis either. Well, anyway, that's a whole supply line thing. But the the point is, fire department doesn't have any money for an ambulance, so the general fund's going to have to fund this. Well, that's virtually all of the general fund's uh, extra money, and that came from the sale of the old firehouse. And it kind of made sense. Well, you know, that was a firehouse, and so we should put that money into the fire fund as opposed to putting it into the to the road fund or the cemetery or or, or any number of other places. So we committed we committed that three hundred thousand uh, dollars for the ambulance. But that's pretty much all we've got. We don't have enough to, to start putting away money for a for a fire truck, a uh, fire engine or a, a quint or a ladder truck or who knows what we need. Fire boat. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway um, that's where we are, and so we, we, we've got to bite the bullet, we've got to go to the public, we've got to tell them that, you know, it pretty much comes down to, if they want somebody to come to their emergency, they're going to have to uh, partner with us and support a levy to, to keep all you good people uh, in, a, in an ambulance or in a fire truck or in something to go and, and serve the public. Um, that's a few, few times a day. <laughs> yeah, that is a few times. On well, average, three times a day. And we want to make sure that the public and the personnel and anyone else understands that funding the firehouse did not take one penny away from personnel. There's, I mean, it, it totally was funded by the levy that we passed for the, for the firehouse. So we could not, even if we wanted to, because that was specifically for the firehouse. We couldn't have put any of those pennies into the personnel uh, account. That would have been against the law, and they would have come and taken us all away and put us in the chains, which we don't want. So, you know, let's not be of the, the, the idea that, well, it's one or the other. No, it was not one or the other. It was, it, it had to be one and the other, because we need both. Anybody who's been in this place knows that this is such an improvement over the one that we had, and you know we were able to do so many more things in here, and it's just a real godsend that we were uh, we were gratefully we we had the levy gratefully passed uh, our long ago. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Back to you. Well, and interestingly, about a year after we passed the fire station levy, our operating levy came up, and there were discussions at the time about should we do a replacement, add-on, but the feeling was the public had just <coughs> given us $5 million to build this place, and I think at the same time the schools were on for their first attempt at mm -hmm. their yeah. building replacement. So um, we decided to just do with a renewal and hopefully make it through the five-year period, uh, which has become clear that obviously we can. So uh, the downside. Well, we have two years left on that. Yeah, two years left. But there just isn't enough in it. And the downside is, you know, it costs a lot to staff a fire department. Um, we have been lucky that we have a staff of very good people, very competent people, very dedicated people. Um, the board was able to give an increase in salaries to paramedic staff last year in the recruitment of a new lieutenant. Um, part of this new levy will include an increase for the remainder of the staff, the VLS staff, um, to bring everybody into a little bit better range. Um, 
We've been lucky also that we're able to, and the, the trustees support this, and a lot of too, but uh, provide health insurance to certain key members at, at no cost. Um, so that is definitely been a good benefit. Um, but we're at a place that we, we need this levy to pass, otherwise the real possibility is that there won't be anyone to answer the calls. Um, we are also, when you compare us to our two closest fire departments in terms of activity in the area, Zinga Township and Sugar Creek Township, uh, we're a hell of a bargain. We, we always have them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, both those departments are operating on budgets that are over one and a half million dollars a year. Um, and a little on secret, this year I think we're still tracking ahead of both of those departments in call volume. So, uh, you know, we've always been a pretty good bargain. Um, and we're going to try and continue that because anyone who lives in Miami Township realizes it ain't cheap to live in Miami Township. Uh, and it certainly isn't cheap to live in the village of Yellow Springs. Uh, and I think the board, well, I know the board and the administration of the fire department is very cognizant of that. We try and balance our needs with the pain of living at times in Yellow Springs. Um, and what the schools are going to do, what the village is going to do, and all the other things. So um, we think, you know, we're worth it. <laughs> we think we provide a wonderful service and an important service. Uh, and we hope that everyone's going to jump on our bandwagon and uh, fund us. We've been crunching numbers for the last couple of weeks. Just for example, um, I think as everybody knows that um, we're running uh, three people 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, and then two supervisors uh, eight hours a day, five days a week. So that's basically 584 hours uh, per week times 52. That's 30,360 hours that we have to pay personnel. 30,368 hours per year. That seems like a lot of time. It is. But if you take Everybody who's, who's in the position of a, of a full-time position and, and, and a pot of additional firefighters and EMTs to cover some, uh, some, some time offs and vacations and those sorts of things. Those people on staff right now are working 26,930 hours a year. 26,930 as opposed to 30,000 um, 368. So we're running, we're doing as best we can. I mean, we're running in the red, uh, we're running um, 3,000, roughly 3,000 hours per year less than we really should have staffing, which means that there are times when we're not staffing uh, three and 24 for whatever reason. It, you know, I'm sure everybody knows that there's only two people on, there were only two people on Wednesday nights, or, you know, there's, there's all kinds of, but it, we're not doing the, the, the basic minimum that we're trying to, we're trying to meet. Uh, and we may not be able to do that minimum we're trying to meet. We're looking seriously at a levy request for 3.5 mils, which is almost exactly the same almost exactly the same as the operating levy that we have uh, uh, on the books now. Um, and that will bring in uh, roughly $670,000 in change additional. Um, and as the Chief just said, we're paying out a fair amount more than $670,000. Um, but we feel that that's, you know, that's really what we should be, or not, we shouldn't be asking the public uh, for any more uh, millage than that now. And, uh, we've been able to budget well over the, over the past, and we feel that we can budget well in the future. We can make this money work for us. Uh, and, you know, it's not, it's not gonna provide, you know, a lot of equipment, it will provide basic equipment that we need, replacement gear, replacement air tanks, uh, you know, fire fire equipment, uh, EMS equipment. Um, uh, we probably won't be buying more hydraulic beds for the ambulances, but we, the ones we have will be able to get to the new, get into the new medic. Um, so, you know, uh, we feel as though we'll be able to go on 
uh, for this next five year period and, uh, and, and be able to work um, uh, as efficiently as, as we have in the past. And we have been working efficiently. Uh, one thing that we did not anticipate and we hope does not continue is this amount of inflation that we've had to put up with for six months or a year, however it's been. Uh, if, if we had to, if we had to put 10% on top of what we're spending now, uh, year after year, it, 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 it'd kill us. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know where I don't know where we are with that, and I don't think anybody does at the moment. But uh, we're hoping with the Federal Reserve uh, in, increasing interest rates that will slow the uh, economy down a bit, uh, as. All you economic people know that it really, really, truly had so much to do with um, with the government pumping trillions of dollars into the economy during the uh, pandemic. Uh, not that it wasn't needed, but it just fueled it, it just fueled so much spending across the board that uh, it, it fired up inflation, and and, and off we go. So. Tom, you want to add anything? I'm curious what the reaction of the folks were paying. Well, I was about to ask the folks. You asked the question of the folks were paying. What's your reaction to what you've just heard? I guess the question I have is, is that just to stay with three people, is that the goal? Is that what you'd want to see? Is there the number or, uh, for crewing? Yes. Know? Okay. The, and, the, and the reason is that the, the amount of calls that we have, number one, we're going to lose Bath Township, uh, I, I'm sure everybody knows. That, not that there was that many calls, but it, it was a factor. Uh, and two, our, our call volume is going up, but it's not going up dramatically. And so we don't see the need to, to add more people at this point. I mean, I, I, right, I don't want to Right, and three that we can supplement with any available volunteers. I mean, the reality is, I'd love to have four to five people on duty. But you just heard 3.5 mils in a new levy, and anything more is going to be un more than likely unpassable. Kind of thing. Um, I mean, we have to be realistic. Um, you know, we're dedicated to going pursuing grants as possible. As anyone knows, federal government loves to shove money towards law enforcement uh, in cities, but for the rest of us, there ain't a whole lot there. Um, and it's who you know and how you write the grant, so we'll have to find a good grant writer. Uh, if we were a city, we'd have UASI money, we could buy ridiculous things like fireboats and mobile command posts, um, but we're not. So, <laughs> uh, but you know, we're certainly lucky pursuing, uh, we'll be pursuing an AFG grant for a fire engine and looking at possible safer grants for additional staffing if need be and everything else we can find for money. So, um, you know, I think there's the, the mix of what I would like and what I know is realistic. You know, I've lived in the town for a long time, and, uh, you know, we were, Yellow Springs was forever the community that said yes to everything. Mm -hmm. Yes to everything. And, uh, and those of you who lived here for a while, remember, school levies always passing, no matter what they asked for. Uh, and we always passed in the 80s. Even the last levy, well, the 70s for the fire station. When um, you say pass, I mean the percentage. Percentage, is, yeah. Um, and I think everyone had their eyes open when two school levies failed here in the Hill Springs. And, and people are now, there's a lot of concern about the cost of the community and, uh, and, and what everything, that, and how that ripples down to everything and affordability and diversity and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've always been happy not to be the, the, bad, the bad guy in that. Uh, in fact, for the fire station, we were happy to produce the pie chart that showed how small a slice of the pie fire rescue was. Um, we're going to get bigger, but we'll still be a small slice of that pie. So, um, you know, hopefully people are remember the service. Slice of the pie, you mean in the overall tax pie? Yes, the overall tax pie, property tax pie. So. And it's important to remember, we have no ability to levy income taxes as a township. So everything we do relies on contract fees or property, property tax. tax. And Bill, uh, yeah, we we get we get a minuscule percentage of sales tax. Um, it's a percent of a percent of a percent. It's very very small. Uh, 
uh, counties and cities. Counties get the largest cut of sales tax. Cities get, uh, in villages, get a pretty good sized chunk, but townships not that so much. Okay. And townships are, unfortunately, I, mean, I heard this at an OTA conference last year, townships are the redhead stepchild of Ohio governments, but are charged with pretty significant responsibilities. Yeah. Fire, yeah, well, not EMS, but fire, cemeteries, roads, those are all pretty important things for people, uh, and we're not funded equally in any way. It is my humble opinion. I don't speak to the township on that one, but um, that's my opinion. You know, we, we end up in these pickles that we have to yeah. rely completely on property tax. Which is not just Ohio. I mean, a lot of states have the same moment. Curious for more. Any other questions? From, I don't know. I mean, you guys came. I think it's really good that, you know, this is being addressed and staff is being looked at realistically that the volunteers really try to except for certain nights we have volunteers like, you know, that are on tonight, which is great, because each one of them places or supplements us. Mm -hmm. The problem I have is with three people, we can staff one ambulance. Like a serious call, let's say a cardiac, let's have a basic call, friends care, so I'm just going to go to the hospital, look on sick, you can have two people, one person drives, one back. Like cardiac arrest, one person drives, you need two people in the back, obviously. For fire, you need a minimum of four. One person drives and two people in the back is three, and that's not enough to go into the fire because if I'm running the pump and being in command, the crew goes inside. If they get in trouble, that's not going to do to help. You're supposed to have technically two outside, two inside. I mean, if we have two ambulance calls simultaneously, we're calling for mutual aid, which means we're waiting for the next available department. If they have staff, in which they might not have, and then it goes, the next department's available, and then they come. So there's a significant delay then. Which has been happening a lot lately. With multiple calls. So, I mean, three is a good start, but I mean, really, there's not much I can do with three people at a fire except right from the outside. So. Yeah, and, and we certainly understand that. And the one nice thing, there's for some reason, fires will bring people out of the woods. I mean, we'll ask for mutual aid and we'll get, we'll get, amp, or we'll get fire equipment from Cedarville, we'll get it from Xenia Township, we'll get it from Houston, uh, we'll get it from uh, Xenia City. Uh, Fairborn, I mean, they'll be here in a, you know, in the blink of an eye. You'll get it you guys have all Cedarville. seen that. Pardon You'll me? get it from Cedarville during the school year. Yeah, fine. Most of their department is year-round. Yeah. Well, the problem is explaining, though, to the homeowner why it's what we're waiting for. I know. I understand. But it, it, to this point, we're fortunate that we have virtually, I shouldn't say no fire calls, but we have virtually not so many fire calls that we have to attend to. A lot of times, and you've been here forever, um, we can you know, we can go to a scene and, and knock down a small kitchen fire or a, a, a furnace fire or something like that uh, with, a, you know, with a minimum amount of people. Granted, if you had a roaring house fire that's out of control, you're in big trouble. Uh, and you've got to have to have people. We couldn't have enough people in town to, you know, to be on the staff. And we, we could never afford to keep that many people uh, on staff. You know, we couldn't afford to have 15 people on staff to fight some, you know, some, some large uh, house fire. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm saying four, not 15. Well, I mean, four the could, is, not fire, could not fight a, a, a I mean, full-fledged How many times do you want to roll the dice until... Well, the reality you know, is... We're going to be lucky to pass this levy mm -hmm. as it is, you know, and we need it for EMS. Those are the calls that we're going out on. I mean, we're going out on 1,300 EMS calls a year. How many structure fires do we have in a year? Well, EMS, I mean, we have two EMSs and three Plus people. Two. But they're the same people who you, we, we fight fires with. No, I know. I mean, but if one EMS is out with three people, there's no much of the second EMS. I mean, we're still calling You're right. Three. Right. So but I'm here in the same ball of wax that the township is. More often than not, they're staffed at one station. Houston, the investor in the daytime or, or night. You know, we've always lucked out that Houston Fire can typically respond with a, a few people, and Cedarville during the school year will show up with an army of people. <laughs> um, but we're all in the same ball of wax. Unfortunately, it's it's getting tougher and tougher, and. You know, you mentioned the idea of fire districts and that kind of thing, and everyone goes all like the power of Christ compels you, and no, 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 we're not giving up local control. Um, 
So you know, we're, we're stuck and we have to do with what we can, or best we can. <laughs> but I want to hear more of, even though we're arguing the, the goal of three, I hear you saying, well, the goal should be four or five. And I've also, a couple people have started to say something and then, you know, I mean, I would, I would just like to hear what's, quite apart from the practicality of passing the levy, what do you think it ought to be? So, one, two things I have, I have a question is how many people, I haven't looked it up, so I don't know. How many people does Sugar Creek have on staff? Because that was one of the comparables, right? How many do they have on staff? 24-7. Right, what's their last time I checked seven to nine. Okay. Which is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that was I don't know if that's still the case. Everyone's having problems with each other. And we could do that. I mean we could do that. All we have to do is instead of having a three point five mil levy request, we have a seven mil levy request. Or or nine. It just depends on how many we want to fund. Um, but then we're also on top of a 3.6, mm -hmm. uh, whatever the fire station is. I can't remember what the millage is for the fire station. 3.8? No. 2.2? 1.8? I don't know. <laughs> Mark? So the village, is, the village faces a unique issue, and so, which leads me to my next question. What are, what are, do we know what the percentage of calls are between trauma and geriatric? Off the top of my head, no. I mean, most of our calls are medical. The vast majority of our calls are medical here. Uh, tra trauma. trauma increases in the summer, but still never close to the amount of, of medical calls. Um, and a large percentage of that are at least over 55. And the reason that I ask that is because we, we know that, that as the bell curve flows through the Yellow Springs, that the median age is much higher than it is anywhere else. And certainly, I would guess that's sort of for the township as well, um, inclusive of both. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I, 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 I'm agreeing with what you, what you're saying about needing, in my mind, we need at least one, one additional body dedicated, whether that be volunteer or, or staff position, to be able to, to, to man two units. Um, if we've got two units, we need to man two units. And so, just just my opinion, and, and, and again, looking at the numbers that we have in Yellow Springs, those medical calls are going to be what, what suck the life out of you. Because trauma, trauma calls are, are, for the most part, load and code, you may have to start a line. Medical calls, those take a whole lot of time. And so that's time that, they, that a unit is taken up. And if you've, got, if you've got a unit sitting in the garage with nobody to man it. We've had... We've had two units in, in our department for God, probably 50 years, and it's a backup. Same way we have two engines, it's, it's a backup. It's not because we need them. It's not, it's not meant don't, to be don't, don't, don't get me wrong. We're probably getting to that point, you know, and we will get to that point where we'll have we'll have a need for two active units, and we've experienced that not too long ago when we had units out for repair. And, <coughs> had the necessity for it. Um, and when that time comes, I guess we'll go back to the public and we'll say, you know, we've got to fund two units, we've got to keep seven or nine people on staff in order to, to keep the township, and the, I mean the village, the township are all the same thing, uh, keep them safe. And so we're back asking you for, for nine or 10 mills this time around, so we can put the additional staff on, buy the new equipment, and I'm not trying to push another staff position, Chris. That's, that's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to illustrate is the fact that we have a greater need here in Yellow Springs with calls that take longer mm -hmm. than, than it, it, the, the older your, um, your population, the more time you're going to spend on the call. Sure. And so that said, um, I think that's part of the messaging that needs to go out to the public is you know, we, we've got two issues as far as this levy goes. Number one is that we've got an aging population, but the second is as we have an aging population, you also have um, that homesteading 
<coughs> exemption that reduces the amount of money that's that's paid into it, paid into that pot mm -hmm. through property taxes. Mm -hmm. um, so if we want to live and, and continue to live in, a, in an area that people are comfortable here with that statistic of, of being being older population, this is where we need to spend money. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask a stupid question from the Green Township, but is it um, certain call times? I mean, that's one thing we ran into down in Houston. If we would extend our part-time pay program past, let's say, till 10 o'clock or even midnight, that would clean up more than like 90% of the runs if we only skip from midnight to 6 a.m. I don't know if that's how it is down here. Yeah, I mean, like most places, our slowest time is midnight to 7 a.m., um, but... Yeah, there's shifts that they'll do three or four. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, there's, I mean, you know how there's those storms. Our absolutely. statistically busiest time are, are weekdays, uh, but that's a standard thing. And, and weekend days during the summer. Friday and Saturday night for Houston has become a problem. Um, you know, we don't have we don't have a crew on after six o'clock, yeah. I and mean, typically we catch a run. Yeah. Five or six o'clock. That usually gets covered by you guys sometimes. <laughs> a lot of times. Yeah, um, and it's. I mean, and that's and certainly Houston during the daytime. Definitely helps us out quite a bit. Yeah. You know, um, and that's great. I mean, I'm glad that we've got a good give and, a give and take. Uh, we've also worked, you know, diligently to pay attention to our EMS billing and increase rates when possible when advised to do so by the billing company. The downside is as we increase rates, Medicare and Medicaid gets uh, wind of that and they, they lower what their allowables are. And as our population gets older, we have more and more patients on Medicare. So they're not paying as well as the railroad retirees insurance or the postal retirees. If we could get an entire retirement community of those two people, we'd be fine. Yeah. Their insurance pays 100% of what we ask. And so, um, well, so, you know, so if you had, to, to Ted's point, you know, if you did uh, some kind of a combination shift where they only work to work a certain point, yeah, to a certain time frame, maybe that saves a little money versus having five people on a full-time basis. Yeah, that's certainly a possibility, and that's something we do at times. Uh, you know, we we were hit earlier in the year with a lot of overtime costs due to people out and all this other stuff. So we're hoping that will flatten some. And last year we were really hit with overtime with, with the oh, pandemic. The damn pandemic. So uh, I mean, the government did give us some money, but government man did give us some money, but not as much as we want. So. <laughs> so. I, I would like you know those. Uh, you folks who are here listening and haven't said anything, is there a different angle on this that you want, think ought to be mentioned or you want to emphasize? Uh, speaking of just a township resident and not a member here. Um, well, but speaking of a different view. Oh, okay. Yeah, from a different view. Speaking of a different okay. Like, I think it's good we're asking for a levy. Uh, I mean, I definitely don't speak for everyone in the township, but. I, as a township resident, wouldn't mind, you know, if the heavy levy was upped in order to cover, you know, two medics or a medic and an engine because, you know, with having older family members in the township, I would definitely, you know, want a response time that's a lot faster than Xenia Township or Houston coming out or even Fairborn. It's, you know, I wouldn't mind paying that you know, extra for a levy to have, you know, more care that's accessible and you know an emergency <laughs> so i mean i don't know if it's possible i don't know if that number is set but you know we're all kind of have some of the same concerns that maybe upping what we're asking for on the levy um, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know but if we if, if, it, if there's a mutual aid ambulance run there's a far <clears throat> our ambulance is one of our ambulances is already out. Mm -hmm. and there's another call. Uh, what's the time difference? Depends on how quickly people request the mutual aid ambulance. Mm -hmm. But ninety-seven and a half percent of our crews will request it right away when they when their tone drops for the second call. They'll say, "Go ahead and go to mu next available mutual aid," and whoever the computer picks. So does that add 10 minutes? It can. You know, for instance, Zia Township might be the next one. So they're right down the road in Old Town. But that ambulance could be out. Or they may just be staffing the South Station. So then they have to come through Xenia 
for it might pull Houston and they might be at Springfield Regional finishing a call so they've got extra response time. Um, or they could be in the station, they're here in three minutes. So it's, you know, it's all, it's all very dependent. Um, we try and set up our run cards to the best availability of each department. Um, and unfortunately that relies more on our smaller, I mean our compadre, Easting Township, Houston, and Cedarville, than the larger departments like Fairborn, um, who because they're doing 6,500 calls a year, more often than not, they're not sitting in the station waiting for Miami Township to call them. Uh, they're on the way back from Grandview. And then you're looking at an 18, 20 <coughs> response time. And no one says that. So we don't get a call saying, oh, by the way, we're coming from Grandview. And you're like, where is this ambulance? Um, so I don't want to say it's a crapshoot, but and it's the same thing that they might get when they call us. I mean, I've responded mm -hmm. to Houston from Green Memorial. Uh, so it's, it's unfortunately the nature of the beast in Ohio and in most states where EMS, particularly EMS, is not seen as an essential service. And Ohio is actually not an essential service. Uh, fire and police are, but EMS is not for some bizarre reason. Well, because the LRC was written in the 50s and mm -hmm. no one thought to over to update that. So, you know, some states have taken efforts on that, especially in the East Coast, Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, but those states would also fit in three of our counties here in Ohio. So. Um, there's a lot more state funding, but I don't believe in our current climate in Ohio we're going to see a lot of money coming forth from the state legislature to help local governments. Again, that is my opinion, not that of the township. <laughs> so it's it's tough. I mean, it's tough for everybody. You know, these are depressing meetings we have with the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association. We all have the same problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it'd be useful to outline the process we have to go through. But this is just the first step of the so-called resolution of necessity, which does include the mills amount. Uh, but then we have to get a response from the county auditor, and then the rest is more of the legalese of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Secretary of State. For and the ballot language, all that yeah. mundane stuff. But, you know, for us, our job is going to be selling the levy, is to have a good, strong campaign, um, a lot of word of mouth, a, a lot of advertising, a lot of signage. It's going to have to be more than it had been in the past. Uh, we would just flow through almost every letter levy we, we put on there. I don't think we can look at this as just a, a gimme. And, and I don't think we should have ever look at a levy or anything as a gimme. I mean, as an elected official who's unfortunately gone through six campaigns, the conventional wisdom is you, you run like you're scared. You know, you run as hard as as you can, um, because you never know what's going to happen. And so that's what we need to do, we need to do with this, is, is run hard and, and really put some effort into it. Um, I, mean, I was pleasantly surprised how well the, the, the lobby for the, for the building went through and how well it was supported uh, and how well it passed. But I don't think we put a maximum effort into that. Uh, I think we got to put them that sort of effort into this upcoming one. I hope I'm, you know, I hope I'm absolutely dead wrong and the public says, oh yeah, that's for sure. I'm, in, you know, I'm, I'm really in support of it. And we get 90% and I will go. Well, if we were going to try to fund four on duty or two shifts or um, is that another mill? Is that can I can I ask what's the basis that people would not vote for the funding for four versus three? Like what is what do you feel is like the breaking point? Are people are gonna say this is too much, you know, that's not what I want. I number one, we've looked at it a lot of different ways. I, I don't think personally 
I could support a whole lot more than this 3.5. I think we're capable of doing the job. Um, yeah, I don't think we need to put a lot more money into it right now. We'll have that opportunity in the future. We'll see how this money uh, gets spent. Do we spend it well? Does it, you know, does it get us get us through? I don't think we need to overload ourselves. I mean, it's not overloading. It's a bad choice of words with a lot more money. Um, and there's just something that. And, and, and I know what three and a half is going, going to get us, and I know how we're going to spend it. It's, it's not like I, I'm guessing, but to, to ask for more than the operating levy now, it just, I just worry about the optics of it. You know? And I say, good public is talking. Good Lord, they're, you know, they want more than, than, than they've ever asked for before. What, you know, what's going on here? What are they doing with all this money? It's also highly possible that we'll be on the ballot at the same time as the school levy. Um, oh, the bill is over also? They're yes. talking about it, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's three, so in answer to your question, that's three levies. If I, as a voter, am looking at that and looking at my property my property taxes, I'm, I'm going to say exactly what Chris said. Good Lord. You know, and at that point, I'm going to look at what those levy, levies are and how, much, how many mills they're asking for. And low man may win. Now, is there a way we can you know, like do a poll or talk to the township directly about this and get feedback from? But it's residents. more than the township. It's this, this one goes to the village too. Yeah. So it's more than it's more than than just the township. But well, the village well, is part of the township right? from the village as well. Yeah, there, there, there is. Kind of, there certainly could be <laughs> polling and focus groups and. Uh, so we could wait until next year, we could even have a special election in the spring, uh, but that bounces a year away, the actual collection. Uh, the deadline is August the 4th? Somewhere in that neighborhood. It's 90 days prior to the election, depending on how many 30-day months you have. And but it's, it's, very it's always early in August like that, yeah. yeah. And that brings something up from Don. I just want to say, uh, if we don't start, if we don't pass this levy and we don't start collecting it um, the mid, uh, first, first collection of 23 to be distributed in the second collection of 23, it, it's, you always collect in the ahead of, ahead of time. Anyway, we uh, seriously could look at being out of money mid-year next. That's about as far as we can get. Uh, I'm sure there's ways that we could try and squeeze a little more out of it, but if, if we couldn't collect until first part of 24, you know, if we couldn't put something on a ballot till uh, either or spring or, or summer or fall, uh, and again, Don's right, if we have a special election, we're going to have to pay for that. So that's money. That's generally two or three thousand dollars, or three or four thousand dollars out of back up, out of pocket. Yeah, for the board. Yeah. So that's that's why we're here where we are today. It's because we're speculating that you know at some point we're going to need an additional uh, line of funds before we run out, and it's just not good business to to get that close. May I ask the, if, assuming you know we, we have the three person on staff at any time, what the format for part time, full time would be? With that maybe it was said I missed it. The plan would be to maintain the system that we have currently okay. um, as the funding comes in, and then look at tweaks as you know as the department goes forward. Um, we it's five the during the day and and three overnight. Just, or we, the rest of the day, I should say. Yeah, you know, we looked at changing some system around, and um, and unfortunately, those systems become too expensive for us. Um, you know, we're I mean, you know, we're spending 
eighty thousand bucks a year in medical insurance and, and that kind of stuff, and which is important and something that the board's always supported and I support. I get that from it too. But um, you know, those those are all costs that are significant and affect what we can do and take the place of a person. So I mean, we would continue, hopefully, filling the holes we have right now, and continue with. Uh, the current model we have with the 3.448s and the hybrid staff and then the, the part-time supplement and any volunteers we can wrangle. Um, I've heard cats, but um, we have one for me in the eye. Yeah, we just hired her. Mm -hmm. We just need to get her certified. And, and the thing to consider with volunteers is when we take them on, which is wonderful, and I, almost everyone here got their start as a volunteer. Um, it then costs <laughs> money to equip, train, and get them all ready to serve. So it's a, it's a, it's a tough slag. Because yeah. it's hard to t tell someone you're going to volunteer your time, not get a whole lot out of it, and we, we're asking you to drop 1800 bucks for an EMT class. So <laughs> do it yourself. So If anybody doesn't know, a basic set of turnout gear runs around $2,800. Ooh, it's got right up. Lauren's gone up. <laughs> It's about 32 now. Don't tell me it's gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anything else from the floor? No, are we factoring in a pay uh, wage increase for the, the basics and the number of the for the number for this? Or? Yes. Okay. Would that adjust over, you know, I th it sounds like it's a five year plan that you're looking at. You know that this would serve for five years. Is that with gradual increases of cost of living going up? And generally, we uh, adjust salaries uh, with cost of living. Uh, I'm I, I, with the way inflation is going now. You know, I mean, our you know our cost of living was always in the two three percent, and which was generally about. A, Sometimes a percent higher than the actual cost of living, but you know now it's running eight, eight to nine percent, and that's yeah, we can't promise the yeah, that's to match inflation. That's a lot. Well, I think we, we need to be competitive, you know, with EMTs because we can't keep people with EMTs now. We yep. need to the parts that pay two yep. million dollars now more. So. Yeah. And we certainly understand that, and we have adjusted on the fly, depending on priorities we have. We had a, we felt a real need for trained paramedics the last couple of years, where we didn't have enough on staff. They weren't, you know, there, there just wasn't enough to serve the community the way we wanted it to. The way we wanted them to. Um, we, we changed around some of those, um, uh, some of those payroll figures, and so I don't think we're going to lose what we have at the rate that we had in the past and we have been fortunate enough to pick up a, uh, a highly skilled paramedic to this point and um, I don't think we've got an open slot at the moment for another one. Well, we're not looking for a paramedic currently. Mm -hmm. we, we lucked out and had two people complete their class. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah absolutely. <laughs> so that added to the ranks. And then, yeah, the plan is, you know, increase everyone else's salaries across the board, and then hopefully cost of living will continue. But I, I would hope that inflation is not going to continue at this pace, and that fuel costs will come down, and those are two big mm -hmm. killers right now. But mm -hmm. We can only hope. Yeah, I feel squeezed between what you're saying about you know, we really ought to have another person on the shift, uh, or at least in these time periods, uh, and what others have said about uh, cost of living in Yellow Springs and the chance of getting the levy passed. Anything else in the forum? I got one more thing. Um, with adding a fourth person, that allows you to, it, it seems like that would allow you to have two medics out and you make some more money from that because you'd be able to bill for that second medical call where you'd normally be shifting that to another department. 
So it, it, it certainly has happened. Uh, it, it, to my knowledge, it hasn't happened enough over the course of a year, which would generate the kind of income that it would take to, to cover the cost of a uh, of another person now. Because you, know, you put, uh, you put um, all the benefits on top of those uh, qualified person salary, and I mean, you're looking at some people are forty thousand, some people are sixty thousand, some people are eighty thousand uh, in total benefits. So. That's an awful lot of insurance billing on a, on a second ambulance that you, that you didn't get the first time around. Right. And unfortunately, billing money doesn't just cover salaries. Most of that covers supplies. And, mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to go towards life back, life back replacements and all that kind of thing. So it's not the panacea in one's most. Anything else? Okay, I'm going to close the discussion from the floor then at this point. And I am going to entertain a motion to um, pass resolution 2225, which would be a resolution of necessity uh, for 3.5 mil uh, levy this fall. Is there a motion? I so move. We have a motion. Is there a second? Yes. I'll second. Uh, any further discussion regarding that motion? <clears throat> I just want to add that uh, Marilyn Moyer isn't here, but she's done a lot of the work in uh, making sure we go through the process. She, she her description is it's, this has been more clerical than content, uh, but she should be saluted for that. And she is very much in support of the resolution also. Yes. She's, you know, we're, we're dealing with a time frame, so we can't, we didn't really want to put it off. I mean, we put it off. I mean, this meeting should have happened last month, a week ago tonight, but it didn't. Um, there's going to be another one a week ago, or a week from now, and, and she would have been here then, but having put it off this amount to this point. We really didn't want to put it off another week and she was fine with that and she expressed her support. So I think we're all right there. Yeah. Um, if that further discussion is closed, uh, we'll vote uh, Mr. Hollister. Well, wait, I just, I also want oh. to acknowledge, I, I hear you folks saying, you know, from your experience and professional uh, evaluation, you think it should be more. And uh, I repeat that. I think we're, we're on the edge here already. Anything else? No. May we vote, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutual, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate your time this evening. Uh, and you're certainly welcome to stay for the exciting rest of the meeting. If that you have um, somewhere else to go, please feel free. Uh, Discretion. We'll move now to the uh, Cemetery Road Department. That would be Professor Gokenauer. Professor. 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 Since the last meeting that I have we've had three burials. We had a full burial on the first end of the two ashes. We had four, we had an ashes Friday, and we had a full ashes coming back. That's that one there. Uh, let's see your column burial has made it. I think they're very much. Yeah. You're a column variant. Yeah. So apparently they're you have a, a box in there? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. I think. But we have some available. Is his, his brain store. Before you go any further, speaking of column variants, obviously they're in. I think they look nice. Everybody I've talked to who's seen them says they look nice. But they don't look, it doesn't look balanced. Those, those two look like. They are right on the tape that was put. But I mean, they, they still look balanced in the space that they, they need another one, is what I'm oh, saying. Oh, I need one more. Uh, to, to make it look. Yeah, I think one more. Yeah. I think two would throw it off. If you want to yeah, one I don't. One more would make it look even, and I think it would be very uniform. Yeah. So it would look real nice. So what we've got the slab and everything in the area. I think it's not. And I talked to the columbarian person, 
And the reason that, well, the reason that I've been thinking about this is I want them to match. And the longer you wait to get another one, the more yeah, potential you have it. The color of the granite is different. Or, you know, perhaps any, any number of things. But I did talk to him, and he does have the material on site to make another one exactly the way these would look. He said it would take about three or four days. What's our reserve and that's a fund? About 95,000. We've got, we've got a fair amount of change. We'll have some other expenses yeah, out of that. But not that much. So we certainly can't afford that. And there's another reason to, to do it, which the more I get into this, the more I think about it. If you look at those, and even with the third one, and we have to talk about this too, about pricing. We haven't even talked about how much to charge for them, but I do know that other places that have columbariums charge different amounts for ones that are up uh, at eye level, higher in the columbarium, than ones that are down below. And I would expect that the one that faces the, the, the public faces as you come into the, the columbarium area, the one that you see first is going to be more in demand than the back side of it or the front side of the one behind it or the back side of that one or the front side of the one behind it or the back side of that one which is the closest to the uh, arborvitae and the, and, the, and the building. I don't think the value of the back one is going to be equal to the value of the front one. And if we put off buying a third one, an established value of the face of the second one, you're then telling people who are buying that, they think they're getting the one that the public sees first coming in, mm -hmm. but now we put a third one in, that's now the, the second one behind. So I would rather put the third one in and then be done with the whole thing because it would be balanced and then let it populate over the years. Yeah, I'd like to discuss that when all three of us are here. Okay. Next week. That's right. <coughs> well, I'm, just, I'm throwing, that's, there's no hurry for that, uh, other than, you know, but we eventually want to open that up, and so we're going to have that's to one. That's what I was thinking about that. I'm sorry, Dan, I interrupted you. Oh, no, so, so we'll discuss the call variance with the next question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, we are in the middle of BD and Clifton for the holiday, getting ready. Rogers down there today working. That was it. He's done. A, I think he's done a great job. He's done a great job. Sure. Keeping up with it, um, but you wouldn't want to get too far behind on that. You have an idea how much he next charges for those trees? No, mm, uh, he didn't tell me. Okay. The one he took the maple down first, and we talked about. They both didn't come down, but he was going to do it later on. Mm -hmm. That's all right. I just yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, I, I don't know. Do you grind the stumps? I haven't done that. No, not yet. But it's all, it's part of it. Mm -hmm. But he did do a good job cleaning up with the until he was there really, even though know, the trees were there. Yeah. The stumps, so. I saw Dowds was in town the other day and they put their, they put the monuments on the foundations that we have. They called today and wanted to know the list of foundations. And I said, I've told you twice. And I told them, talk to them. And so I called back in the morning and gave them the list of because when mm -hmm. they, they, they look it up, they can't look it up by cemetery, they have to look it up by name. I said, I'll throw a car back tomorrow for this, the ball basically. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, see, I've got one here that they went in by September 5th, and that's not going to happen. We don't do it until October. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll uh, talk to her about that tomorrow. Too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we got a little dogs. They're great people. Oh, I love them. I like working with them. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. But they've been dropping stones. That are supposed to be placed up by the building. Yeah. And that's another discussion we're going to have tomorrow. So. <laughs> I don't mind it for the natural barrier area because we place it. Yeah. So they know where to set it, but they've got a habit of just setting the small flat stones by the building. So we're going to talk about that for too. Again. Mm -hmm. so. um, your server there was in a week or so ago. Did you get to talk to him? 
Uh, I did not catch him. I actually am going to uh, meet with the survey of the owner with Doug Sutton tomorrow morning and finalize the layout. Because this this is for the Oak Grove. Yeah, we, we moved to the Oak Grove. I'm sorry. Um, he's always said that he doesn't trust prior surveyors' work to be accurate, and he needed his four pins in. That's what he got the other day. Yeah, to to know you know where he starts from and then and then marks off from there. It makes sense. So he's got that, and I'm gonna go down, and we're gonna agree on his plan or my plan or somebody's plan, and then. And then he's still supposed to mark those off okay. right away. Well, we're pretty much ready. I mean, yeah. We've got a little bit to do back there, but yeah. I don't think it would affect him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, go on Nothing. Tom? Yes, sir. Uh, Frank, Pam, and I are here. And Alan couldn't be here. Alan Armstrong couldn't be here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have. Uh, Went to county is county. This a, is this a, a, a an advertised meeting? Mm -mm. We're not conducting business. No. Okay. We're just, we're just here telling you what. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we at we have went to county dispatching in Clark County, mm -hmm. uh, Green Township was a holdout for over a year. All the other departments, all the other townships had went with the county. We finally went with them. But anyway, all the runs in Clifton are now going through our county dispatching, which goes to either Kitchen or Houston Fire and EMS. Mm -hmm. So I guess what we're here today is we're wanting to terminate the contract that we've had with you guys for ever on the paying $1,500 a year for them to cover that section in the town mm -hmm. of Clifton. Um, you know, when that whole thing started, there was a fire department right there in mm -hmm. Clifton, uh, and which it made sense for you guys, you know, who the county did. more what the village of Clifton residents wanted at yeah. the time as well anyway. And then you guys kind of moved that out and was yeah. on to here. And now you've moved clear on the other side of Yellow Spring. So we're, in our mind, we're just as close now as what you guys are for our residents. And uh, so that's basically why we're here is just. Uh, Let me go see if I can dig up Colin because I, I want him to hear this. And, and okay. I, I was hoping we'd yeah. be here yeah. when we talk about yeah. it. Oh, yeah. uh, just one sec. I, I think we were confused. We were making assumptions about what content why you were here. <laughs> so you assume. Now you know what assume means, don't you? <laughs> uh, I won't go any further. <laughs> no, so as, as much as anything, just, uh, you know, of course our, our personality at Houston or over at Green Township would be is that we would, if we're going to terminate something, we want to come talk to you about it in person, not just send you a termination yeah, letter. We should, but we should have tried to include yeah, this yeah, yeah, in, exactly. in uh, the fire and Colin's been gone all day and had just come, so it's hopefully he's still in his office catching up. He said he was going to quell a riot. Oh, in the back. Sounds like they're having a little bit of a uh, discussion. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's not a roar yet, but. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> You thought we were here to complain about the cemetery? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll be darned. No, I, was, I was assuming it would be a, a new business item. We're very happy with everything that's been going on in the cemetery this year. It's been a lot of different things for the EMS has had in the past. That's right. I wanted to tell you, you know, without your the rest of your policy area. <laughs> we're, we're, we're liking your workload, basically. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking, really. But, uh, basically, what we were talking about was 
uh, we went to county dispatching in Clark County. Our township is went with the county. Oh, cool. And uh, so everything, that, any calls that come goes out of our side of the Clifton Village is going to that, and then they're dispatching Houston or Pitchin. And uh, so basically, we were here to tell you we'd like to terminate the contract of the $1,500 a year. Or not uh, renew or whatever. whatever renew or whatever, whatever you wanted to call it. Uh, and we have you made any runs there this year? Do you know of Volcan? North of Clifton? <laughs> Maybe one or two. I mean, the north side of Clifton typically accounts for. Well, see, what, Maybe four our, or five a call. What, what our concern was, of course, we made a mailing to every resident in Green Township, including those Clifton people, telling them that they, had, they, were, they were going to. Yeah, county right. dispatching in Clark County and uh, you know our fire departments was going to be taken and EMS was taking care of that area. The question is do you have residents that call somewhere direct to you people that no that one of their know of but we don't think that that's usually the case. What happens now is a lot of the calls route directly to Green County Central because they're 767 prefix numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, they have been supposed to have been going to Clark County for eons, uh, the way 911 system is, but... So you don't, you they're not going to... Uh, I, don't, I think it, It's uh, about 50-50. Yeah, I would say it, it depends on who's working in dispatch that day. It was. And we've had times where someone called from like High Street in Clifton, and it got to Central Dispatch in Xenia, and there was a new dispatcher who was like, Clifton? Who's that? And then they <laughs> transferred to Clark County. Clark County would say, no, 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 we don't cover that. That's my township, and they come back, and eventually, we're just like, just send somebody. Yeah, it so, doesn't matter who, just send somebody. So, yeah, I mean, as long as someone shows up. Basically, they've been told that dispatching it is to be utilized through our township. Cool. So, and that's, you know, part of the story I had was, you know, you used to have that fire station right there in Clifton made perfect sense for that just to cover the whole town of Clifton. And now that you guys, you, know, you moved to Yellow Springs, you were still closer, but now that you're on this side of the Yellow Springs, I, I, I think we can cover them just as quickly as what you can. So that was the whole point of us coming was to, hey, we'd like to terminate that. And we don't need to, we don't, I guess, do we need to send you a formal letter? Do we need to do anything nope. or just nothing? No, nope. that's fine. If it's, I mean, if, if it's, it's all right with the fire chief, and he thinks that uh, that that section of the village is is safe enough, you know, without us, find it. Yeah, Clifton's always been an anomaly to a degree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't, we, I mean, we don't do any fire prevention there. We don't do any inspections or anything like that. Um, and we do still appreciate your, 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 your you supplying us with mutual aid should we need it in the village. Of oh yeah, yeah, we'll be there. Like, like, a, like a, and like after six p.m. Yeah. So <laughs> as long well, as you guys are there we're before trying. six p.m. for us, so <laughs> we're trying. Okay, so that takes care of that. You're excused. <laughs> You're excused. Uh, <laughs> everyone's excused. Well, no, I guess not. Everyone. We thank you very much. Hey, but we are on. Uh, so, so now we, we're full fledged on marks. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, um, and we're oh, getting ready to do a reprogram at some point in time. So when we do that, we ought to get you up to speed with the Clark County CAC channels. Yeah, we're trying to get our templates. But they're updated, re. But, uh, yeah, I know they're redoing there. So something. you probably. I don't know if you have correspondence with Michelle back and forth, but she, Ken's kind of the one running that. So. Okay. But yeah, now we're waiting on the final templates before we update ours. They're supposed to be going to their new dispatch center sure. that was built in 2020. I never call myself. Uh, hopefully <laughs> sooner rather than later. Cool. So it. Um, and I got. It's I, working okay. Good. It was a total change for us. We went from um, we had four I worked, dispatchers I had a for different number. Um, actually, we and wanted to have a celebration for them when we discontinued, and uh, so we asked them how many years they had. We had. One with 43, one with 41, one with 42 years, one with 30 years. Ooh, the same voices for a long time. Mm -hmm. Jeez. That's seven. Yeah, I mean, you know, when we, when we go on a run, seven, two, call their seven. number and I go, hey, it's Brian. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, 
Did, so, total, total personal. Mad River go also, or are they still? Mad River went first. Okay. Um, they shifted Enon. They were really getting pushed hard by the public over there. Yeah. Um, way harder than we were. We really wanted them to open up their new dispatch center, and it needed to happen, but yeah. it's um, cool. We went, we went kicking and screaming, I guess. But we, yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we didn't want to go and, too and easy. We made yeah. the jump. And no, a couple of years behind, so. Yeah. Getting that even open, so. Yeah. Better late than never. You know, it does, uh, when you, you were talking earlier about, you know, the uh, time of dispatching, it, it, it does cost some time if, you know, they call 911. Sure. And, and then they go, hey, that's in Houston's area. We got to forward a call to them. And our yeah. dispatcher's at home and she might be asleep. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, she can do whatever she wants to do, okay? As yeah. long as she answers the phone, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter. But uh, you know, but she might have been asleep. So you know, that's uh, I don't know. It's, I think we're better off. We're trying to move forward, just like you guys are trying to do, is to move to the 21st century, <laughs> or at least the 20th. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck on your uh, trying to get more money on your levy. Yeah. Uh, on your levy. Thanks, Tom. You know, with with. Gas prices and food prices, yeah. the way they're going up and everything. Uh, Nobody's got the stomach for any. I, I think, you know, it used to be. Everybody's got their hand out, you know. Yeah. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. used to be if it just said fire or EMS, buddy, if yeah. you knew it was going through and not a, not a problem. But it's come to the fact now that I'm not sure that's the case anymore. Yeah, there's no sure thing out there. That's for sure. Before People want you to show up immediately, yep. but they're not sure they want to pay for that. <laughs> Sad but true. <laughs> yep. Thank we, you. When we, you know, I run with Houston, and I have people ask all the time, you know, I'll show up in this or my orange shirt. What took so long? Well, I was at work. What took so long? So by the time I got to the firehouse, I got in a truck and got there, and that's why I'm dressed like this. Mm -hmm. Not professional like Colin and his crew is sometimes. Some people just don't understand that. They just assume, you know, there's a firehouse there. So I know. Clearly there's staff in there. I mean, uh, uh, sitting around playing cards when it's called. Yeah. I, it hasn't yeah. met a lot of people, but I, I'm just amazed at the amount of the couple of people that I've talked to and said, talked about the levy and the reason. And they go, What do you need a levy for? You're, you know, it's an all volunteer fucking yeah. EMS. You, you don't have any new friend money. I'm going. Yes, and we're waiting for your application. Five. Where's it at? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here, let me hand you this. <laughs> well, people just, uh, that's the way that it always was. Mm -hmm. And the older generation still think that it's that way. The younger generation kind of knows there's a difference, but. Yeah. Well, even volunteers get paid. They go out on roads, they quote volunteers, that the part time people that are called volunteers. There's a, there's, there's a uh, reimbursement as that. Yeah, well, for a run. Fortunately, uh, for us at Green Township, we are we we have the only 100% volunteer department in Clark County. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, nobody, seriously. Nobody in Pitchin gets paid anything. The ch I mean, the chief gets uh, he's getting a thousand dollars a year. Chief for, the for, being, chief, for yes. being the fire chief. That's it. And then the guys at all at Houston, at least on the fire side, and there's a part-time pay crew that's down there. Really, they demand the squad, but there's nobody on the fire department that's going to pay. Mm -hmm. The chief, I guess, chief and assistant chief. It's the last one, you know. It's, yeah. It is. It's full fledged. It's a dying thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, it's not dying. It's dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just like he said about the volunteers. Who wants to spend as many hours as it takes to to be a volunteer? Exactly. Uh, when it, your life's too short anyway. Yeah. Well, and you, get, and you can get paid better somewhere else, doing something with way less stress. Mm -hmm. That was done, Colin, that I was absolutely, I'm absolutely astounded moving here to Ohio with the, the, the model you have for, for fire and EMS, period. I, I come from Michigan. I own an ambulance company in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And the model here is just, it is really clunky. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. It, it was pretty seamless up there. But it's pretty, we've pretty we've looked. There's been, some, there's been some tires kicked, and I don't know if there will have much traction it will get, but you know, going to a countywide EMS service. Of some sort, where the next, you know, the next closest ambulance is staffed, and, you know, and strategically place them based on population throughout the area, okay. and then make sure they're staffed with a paramedic or an EMT or at least a paramedic on every squad. Because you know, we have a lot of ships that used to that there may be two basics, or two very, you know, unseasoned 
basics of that, you know, and that's that's a totally different that's a different ball box too. That's scary. The, yeah. the, the model in Michigan, you have you have you have to have less medics per fire station because the what the what happens is that the townships and municipalities contract with private ambulance services, which in turn can go ahead and run the emergency calls, which mm -hmm. are always at a deficit. But they, they always lose money, but they supplement that with the private with the, with the private service calls, which it, which evens it out. But it's a, it's a, it's an elegant model. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, one of the guys from your guys' staff was talking about you know with, with the billing, and does that offset having an additional squad? And then of course for. For me, since I'm the same size as you guys do, I go, hey, if, it, if Miami Township will guarantee that I get a run every day, we'll do it if you said every day of the week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, but you can't guarantee that. You don't want to pay, you want to pay a thousand dollar minimum for every every day mm -hmm. to have a squad available. You know, we, we can't afford that. But, I know. And, and the and the run volume um, from from somebody like me who runs all the time, the run volume is nuts. It comes in it comes in very rarely in one. Mm -hmm. It's usually twos, threes, back to back. Mm -hmm. They're clearing the hospital. She says, "Stay by for your next run." Yeah, you know, it's just it's boom, boom, boom. The weather's good. All of a sudden, you know, they got a crash. It's got multiple patients. You know, you just can't you can't have enough people. You know? Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jeff, and I, I know. Hey, we thank you, to talk. Thank thank you, you for it. coming. Yep. Yeah. Careful out there. Yep. Hold up. Come back July 12th. Call 911 <laughs> if you need. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Roads. Mr. Brown? Our roads have been called to everything we asked for. We took care of last week. How about they look much better than the last time? Always. The last year? Yeah. yeah. We, didn't, we didn't ask for Larkins or Smith to be called. Sip was full last year. I know, but it was such a lousy job. Mm -hmm. I thought we were going to try and do that again. No, I wouldn't put it on had I known. Okay. Well, if I added swimming pool and the rest of harvesting, it would be more good. Yeah. And yeah. they look good? Yeah, yeah. they're good. It's always next year, as they say. Yeah, we get, I mean, Sip was last year, so it didn't hold up so last year. Yeah, well. I know. Well, I, I know it wasn't the prettiest job, but we did get to see it. You know, we put it on the list next year. But, you know, I know it's early, but uh, yeah, Houston's starting. Houston's starting to get on the road. Yeah, I'm starting that round one. All right, yeah. really? Wow, it just seems like I started, started, but then we got to sidetrack with other things. Yeah, and, uh, just seems early. But that's why I'm going to start tomorrow. And, and Grinnell Circle's got some stuff that's right. out. Um, That'll take two of us more of session. Yeah. I have to talk to the residents while I'm not treating stuff. For and Larkins is the same way. Yeah, they are. I know. Good to lose. Did you ever notice that Larkins has has no sign at Wilberforce Clifton? Wilberforce Clifton. No, I didn't. They fixed it once. Oh, well, they're gone again. Yeah, I notified them and they put a sign up. Is it gone again? Mm -hmm. That will that will first put the. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll call down there tomorrow. Are are we black topping on Kyle or was that a private resident? <laughs> at the corner. Have you been down there? Uh -huh. Oh, did he have that corner topped off? See, we wedged that uh, uh, yeah. four years ago. I think we wedged and left a little bit of it. Well, and he said he was going to have him fix that. So, our friend and neighbor there must have had his driveway paid. Did you see that? I thing? have not. Okay, been, that's where it is. First thing in the morning. Yeah, though. that's that's where it is. Is he had an apron to his new cement pad, blacktop, and so he must have had a little left over and said, well, "Go down there and put that." Put the water. Put yeah. the water put away. So I thought I'd ask we him thought that. when we wedged that we pulled that out enough to go in there that but it didn't. So he had mentioned that before. He wanted to do bag quick reading. Mm -hmm. I said, no, don't do mm -hmm. so, And we tried some uh, cold patch in there, but he didn't stay. Mm -hmm. But it should stay if he put hot milk on there. Yeah. I, I'll have to go look. And North River needs to also. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It, is the overhead starting to come down? I mean, are we potentially going to have a complaint about that? The overhead trees on North River oh, interfering with I don't, I, combines and well, trucks and maybe the like. Later in the year, if we don't have it, if I can get it now, it should be all right. Anything hangs up, we will knock it off. 
Did you, I don't know if you've been out there, there's a fairly large branch. It's not on the road, but it's right next to the road. You drive by the sign, along the stretch where the sign is. No, it's, it's where, where moved that one, so it's, to, it's where Joe's property used to be, you know, that at the very end of the road. Right, there's a curve there, but that big, the great big tree used to be just about there, but on the other side of the road. But it, it's a, it's a pretty good sized branch. Wow. It's right up to the edge. Maybe I'll take a quick run in the morning. When, before I go out. when you talked about overhead, how many feet? Was it 15 or 14? Well, we do 17 foot, 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 but some of these combines are 18 foot. Yeah. You know, if they don't put their tops down, that's the problem. They don't put their hoppers down. If they put their hoppers down, it's not a problem. But they don't do that. They don't take that long. But we can get up 17. I can do 17. Anything higher, we have to put us on. We'll take it. You have to stand on the top of the trunk truck bed. Or you know, a back township where you're doing truck over. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, where you, you go in the parade. Have you been in the parade this year? July. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Let's put that under a uh, new business. Okay, fine. Oh, no. That's all I had for this world one talk about trimming. Okay. Um, you had mentioned a not very good news item. Um, long time township employee, John Finn, passed away yes. uh, recently. And for a short illness, sh long illness and a short. Right. Time and uh, um, I, I really enjoyed John. <laughs> he was a fight. Well, he came from his father, so I, you know, that, that, that Finn, there was a lot of. Well, we became friends. You know, we worked together. We worked well together mm -hmm. at the time, most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time we, we got on. Mm -hmm. As far as a team, you know, we were, we were a good team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We knew what to do. I, I'd like to send his wife some flowers uh, for the township. That would be one motion or? No, I'll just get okay. to I don't know any of the details yeah. as to the viewings or anything, but I'll find out later. Anyway, mm -hmm. anyway I just wanted to, I wanted to mention that and, and say how much we appreciate it. What do you work, 20, uh, 25, 22, 22 years? And uh, I wasn't here before then, but I imagine he was around with his father oh, a lot. Yeah, I hope he did a lot with him. Yeah. Earlier, earlier years, mm -hmm. Harold started in 79, I think. Mm -hmm. But even at that, they helped the township before that. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because of the fire department, they were right. the fire department. John was a new fire department for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Uh, Okay, let's see, we talked about Oak Grove. That's another thing we have to uh, work, or not work on. Well, we have to work on pricing that. Um, in addition to that, we have to decide because we only have 60 spaces for the, the tree memorials. Mm -hmm. Do we want to prioritize that? Do we want those to be local residents in the space, or do we want to sell? I mean, this is, in my guesstimate, this is going to be very popular. And I would could, like we to. draw a lot of people into the to the natural burial area now from out of. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of inquiry about the new area, and I talk to people about it. I tell them it's not ready yet, and we have people that hold off. I would like to to go out there and walk around. But I don't. In the abstract, having walked around shouldn't make any difference in in talking about it. But it just doesn't mean anything if I have. Well, any anytime you want to go out, I've got I've got things staked out, you know, with mm -hmm. like a draft of where locations where things would be, and I have someone yeah. making a drawing okay. or a painting, as it were. If I had, if I had the drawing and walked what out there, look like. So I'd like to see the drawing somewhere. Well, it, it's I don't have it yet, but well, we can do. Could I, what do, I do? Could I see it? Sure. So well, you will see it. Out. Everybody will see it. I have a general. I don't the Yellow Springs News might get a chance to see it. Perfect. <laughs> In a paid ad, of course. Huh? In a paid ad. Mm -hmm. Of course. Okay. Enough, enough of these ramblings. Is there anything else for the roads? Mm -hmm. 
On the 6th, I will not be until about noon. I have to take more for procedure to attack the meeting. So we'll go with that on yeah. the 6th of July. We will be having a meeting. Yeah, you know, also, I just want to. I got to take her to seven in the morning. That's fine. Okay. Gosh, I mean, if, if you can't make it, that's you know, for whatever reason. That's fine too. Um, one one last thing for for cemeteries. I know we're bouncing back, but uh, I don't know if everybody knows this. I believe it. We own and are holding GlenForestCemetery.com. We we own the domain name, mm -hmm. and I'm have asked our IT person to investigate the possibility of making an actual website for Glen Forest because now we have five separate sections. You know, and it would be nice if we had one place that we could go and and expand on them, have pictures of them, perhaps have a have yeah. a drone, yeah, uh, like a video of, of, of a drone flying I, over. I like that idea. You know, all of those sorts of possibilities. So shh, I found a website uh, for a cemetery in Cincinnati, beautiful cemetery, it's Spring Grove, it's huge. But it, it, it's broken down into the, the way it, you know, I kind of envision you know, the different sections that we could have. And so she's going to look at it and think, think about it. And, uh, it's a great idea. Did so, you notice the scattered gardens in the Ojaka Natural Area? No, I haven't been up there yet. I noticed. Uh, you'll notice the headstone remaining thing. Remaining? Is it really? So far. All right, great. And make little adjustments. We'll have to look at it and see if the adjustment's okay. Mm -hmm. And it's my fingers, it seems to be working. Fine, yeah. And you really don't even notice it. Yeah, all right. I'll take a look when you get up there and see what you're doing. I will go up there directly, as they say. Okay, thank you very much. Fiscal Office Report. Well, she's not here with us, but she's here in spirit. And she's also here in resolution. And we do have resolution 2022-24. It is an amendment of per permanent appropriations. And it goes like this. Whereas this is an ongoing, ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. In the gas tax fund, 2021-76740, which is machinery, equipment, and furniture, we need to increase that by $10,185. Did you spend it in there? Or might be for the truck. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. And EMS billing 2281-2222-12, Social Security increased by $1,700. My intention, trustees, authorize the fiscal officer to do so immediately. I so move. There is a motion. I will second the motion. Is there any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote, please, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Oh, not there. And Ms. Reacher? Yes. Resolution has passed. Thank you, and uh, she will certify it uh, when she views the uh, recording. Anything else for the fiscal officer while we have her on camera? No. Will she be back this week? She will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, she she technically she could have been here this evening, but she just wasn't quite feeling up to it, which is certainly fine. I'm sorry. What was the second number that you said? There was the gas tax fund. Oh, the second one, EMS billing in the in the um, in the EMS billing fund, which is uh, part of the fire fund, of course, twenty two eighty one. Um, it's to pay Social Security tax on on part time employees that aren't in the Ohio Public Employee Retirement System. So we pay both. Zone inspector, that's first meeting of the month. We don't really have anything to go over that this evening, uh, unless you do, Don. Nope. Okay. Standing committee reports, uh, and the RPC, which, which shouldn't have the executive committee anymore. The board of directors, Marilyn, was not able to go to the June meeting, so she didn't have a report for that. Regional Planning and Coordinating Commission um, uh, did meet last month, uh, and we'll meet, meet again tomorrow, actually. And uh, it's just uh, n normal work with the exception of we're just about to put the finishing touches, in fact, the finishing touches of the new 2020 land use plan for the county, which reminds me, going back to the zone inspector's report, and I'll bring this up again next month, but it has been over 10 years that the Miami Township, believe it or not, comprehensive land use plan has been in effect. 
and uh, it should probably be reviewed. We should ask our planning, our zoning commission, to uh, just take a quick look through it and see if there's anything that that uh, might stand out to anybody there that, that could be addressed. It's not a top rate or more. It needs to be put in. Um, I agree. Clifton Union Cemetery. Well, you had everybody here, but you haven't met, right? No. Uh, we do have an opening on the board and two people who are interested in that has to be sorted out. And I'm, uh, Tom Waddle and I uh, exchanged words and we'll have a phone call. I'm glad you didn't exchange the students. Uh, speaking of which, you've seen your pal, Travis? No, I have not. Good. I have a, something from the sheriff from my price when it's a case number or in case you want to call bring it in. Yeah. We need to get it. Yeah. Okay. We, we should have a file. file. Oh, that's right. You haven't been here. Yeah. Uh, give him a nickel tour of, of I, your experience. I, I mowed in front of a house on South River Road, which the grass was as tall in our right And I was approached by the living in his house. We had a discussion and he showed me. So I had a, had a file a complaint with the county or what it that document that this happened. So deputy came to the report and I had a case number case report. Told Danny wasn't allowed to mow the berm. Right, and I explained to him my rights and he didn't understand and he knew I gave him shit me going that the, our conversation room and we should lay hands on and I notified him and he notified Sheriff's Department and they came to the group And they are well aware of Yes, I understand they're well aware of Well them. aware of um, And hopefully they'll be able to give him some assistance. If they won't be any more, you know. He, he tends to miss his medication. Mm -hmm. Something. Mm -hmm. Something. So anyway. Uh, okay, why is DC? Uh, things are relatively subdued. Uh, we do have a uh, tax work group uh, that's meeting, uh, I think it's July 12th, with, because of vacations and all got delayed and I felt a little uncomfortable with acting today on a tax levy when we hadn't had full communication. Uh, the schools are going ahead with their stuff and so, uh, that is, we want to look ahead and coordinate uh, what are the What's the tax calendar? What's uh, what might be happening uh, over the next five years? Um, and anyway, that's a, a priority. Uh, seems like there was another group I wanted to report on, and it's not on the list. What would that be? Um, I don't have it. Oh, well, yeah, it's not on the list. What would it be? Minor seniors. Well, it's not. A, it's not a standing committee that goes to all time. That's more than it is. That's the supreme. Oh, yeah. I think that's it. Well, nothing else. Okay. Uh, Cornell Mill. We are. We're at the end. Uh, we intend to sign the agreement this Friday. Uh, with um, or Saturday. First is for the transfer of operation from the township to the land for the Canal Mill. That's about all there is of that. The uh, Yellow Springs Climate Action and Sustainability Group, that's Maryland's. Uh, she didn't put it on here, but the um, One Ohio Opioid Foundation, uh, which is being uh, put together now, they had a, we had, I guess we had, had a uh, working session last week. And 
it, it was a very fundamental type of working session. Uh, who's doing what, where to get insurance, how much insurance, uh, where to put the $475 million that's waiting to be spent. <laughs> Interest, interesting conversation. Anyway, so that takes care of that. So we'll go down to new business. How, how much is it? Four, I believe it's 470 million. Uh, and, and it's one lump sum. And so they'll get it. And so now they have to find and hire a financial advisor what to do with this 470 million before they spend it. So it makes them, you know, it securely makes them some uh, interest, makes them some capital out of it, which would be a pretty good chunk. Um, so we're up to the fireworks, and we did have a request from the from the um, uh, Yellow Springs Fireworks Fund, I guess it is, um, the Odd Fellows, who are in charge of that, for a contribution this year to the fireworks fund. Uh, traditional contribution is uh, roughly in the five hundred dollar range. Um, we could do that again, or we could do more or less at your. Um, I would rest. move to give five hundred dollars. Okay. Okay, can I weigh in? Uh, just just give me one sec. Sure. If we have a motion, I'll second that. Any uh, further discussion regarding that? Oh, thank you, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, just to, and I don't know if you were aware of it, but, um, it, you know, don't, but the price of the fireworks has doubled. Um, well, you almost see? doubled. It's gone from $6,000 to, to $10,000 for the, to produce the fireworks show this year. Oh, um, so if, if it is, with, I know you, I know everybody's budget is tight. But, uh, I, I would amend my motion uh, to uh, make a donation of seven hundred and fifty dollars. And for the record, the chamber is also helping to raise funds um, for the fireworks as well through it, from its membership because of because of the increased cost. Is there a second of the amendment? It's an amended motion we're doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to second the amendment. Uh, yeah. Just, okay. I mean, I, I do. I do. Uh, any further discussion regarding the seconded, the amended motion? No. Can we vote, please, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Just make sure yes. Uh, Thank you. If that's not going to work, we'll figure it out. Uh, any other new business? The old business. I don't see anything else on the list. Um, oh, okay, and the next meeting is in just over a week. So mm -hmm. uh, I was going to ask you: is, is the um, is the YSDC are, are they using the space for the ordinary West Street, Coralie, West Street, Coralie, West Street, Coralie, for a seventy-two-year-old male? Just, uh, that's we, we, so he's not alert we like being here. Okay. Medicating one, hang out 1855. Do you like it? Okay, anything else this evening? Hearing uh, hearing uh, well, I just want to remind that we are hosting the County Township Association. Uh, what day is that? Well, that's why I, I turned my phone on I to hear. <laughs> check my calendar to confirm that it is July 12th at 6 o'clock. Right. Or exactly at 6.30. We're setting up at 6. That sounds like a, uh, a failed strong request for somebody to be able to set up. Okay, I made a motion to adjourn. I so move. Move a second. We're adjourned by acclamation. Perfect. Okay.